Hey, this is Tim Pierce. Deep Purple came out with In Rock in 1970. That's when I started playing guitar. They were my favorite band. And in 1972, they came out with Machine Head and Smoke in the Water. I've been playing that song forever, and I think I just learned how to do it right for this video. I hope so anyway. Click the link below if you want to check out the masterclass. I'm really excited to talk about the sound of this, but first, let's look at the actual playing of it. And it's probably a lot of stuff you know, but I'm just gonna quickly go through this. It's the fingers, not the pick. I saw a film of Richie where he used his thumb and his first finger. For me, it's these two fingers that are mo most comfortable doing it. For you, it could be any combination. I could probably do it pretty well with the thumb and the third finger. I think for every guitar player, it'd be a different thing. So you're, you're just picking two notes at a time, Fret five, three, five again, and then six. And there are spaces in between each stab. There's even a space between that move. So there has to be muting going on. And the way I mute in this case is with this hand entirely. These fingers mute, the flesh down here mutes, the thumb mutes, all the flesh from this hand is keeping the guitar silent when I create the spaces. Like that. And so you should pay attention, and I should pay attention <laughs> to the spaces in between the notes and the timing of those spaces. So it starts on the A string and the D string and moves over to the D string and the G string. And there was one film of Richie playing it up here with his thumb. Kind of being a showman, you know, he played it a thousand times, I'm sure, so he, he had to keep <laughs> finding new ways to do it. But to me, it sounds really, really close when it's down here in its proper position. And I saw him interviewed saying, this is the position. Before I talk about how I chased this sound, let's talk about how he created the sound. First of all, it was his famous, in quotes, 1968 black Stratocaster. Everything I've seen of him live doing this has this pickup selector in the bridge position. Best info I could get was that he either used a Marshall Major or a Box AC30, but that was speculation. If any of you guys know exactly the amp he used, please leave it in the comments. Also, he used a Revox tape recorder for the solos, and it's likely that he left that tape recorder on without any slapback, just as a boost into the front end of the amp. Um, I don't know if he did that on this, but that's something he did sometimes. One article I read said that he used a Hornsby Skews treble booster. If anybody knows about that, let me know. But the primary feature of this that makes it sound like smoke on the water to me is the short room reverb. I recreated it in Pro Tools. I'm sure they got it naturally. It's this reverb that has a short decay. where you, It sounds like it's just hitting the back wall of a nice medium-sized room. To me, that's the primary thing. After, you know, after getting a good tone on the guitar, that's the primary thing that makes it sound like smoke on the water to me. Now, I could have fired up one of my vintage Marshalls or a Vox to get this sound, but I chose to do it in a more practical way. And that is to set this amp, the divided by 13, to a slightly cranked up sound, which is what I always do. It's just kind of up in the sweet spot where it's beginning to get some gain to it. And then I used a pedal to overdrive it. I think lots of pedals would work for this, but I chose my pedal just to fire it up. I hadn't used it in a while. So I fired up both sides, those are the settings. It's not too overdriven, because it's not, it, it, you want it to be a natural kind of game. Whatever pedal you use, you want it to be natural sounding. Now I'm gonna show you how the amp sounds by itself. <laughs> See, if I pick light, it sounds pretty clean. And then if I, if I pick a little harder, you can hear that it's cranked up with some natural gain. Now let's turn on the pedal. Now I'll turn it off. So any pedal you use just to bring the gain up 
And the thing I love about this sound with the fingers, you get a squawk, a natural squawk, kind of after you release each time. And you particularly will get that if you use an old vintage Marshall cranked way up. You'll hear the, the sag of the transformer and the squawk that happens after you release each stab. Now to find this sound with some lower priced gear, I plugged into the Filmo sound, which is not as expensive, certainly as divided by 13. You could probably buy three of these for the price of the divided by 13. And then I found the most obscure distortion pedal in my graveyard I could find. It's an Aria distortion. I think I got it from a friend of mine at Future Music, Jack, a couple of years ago. And this is just to prove that you can get this sound a lot of different ways. So I'm gonna fire it up and let's see what happens. Let me turn the tone down a little bit so it's not quite as bright. Let me turn the distortion down so it's a little more natural. Let me turn this guy up a little bit because it, it was set dead clean. There we go. So by taking what you have and massaging it and brightening, darkening, turning gain up, turning gain down, turning distortion up, turning distortion down, you can find it. For me, the main thing is that short plate sound. And you can get that perhaps from a pedal or from your DAW. This is a medium room in Pro Tools. And you're there.